testify of many things that only God could do. So even when the walls in front of me make me feel so small, in the name of Jesus, that stronghold's gonna fall. holy presence of hands that are unseen each day that I live I know they're guiding me sometimes I'm overwhelmed but no matter what I face the strong, gentle hands of my Lord will keep me safe. I'm in good hands, so why should I worry? Jesus is with me, my He leads me to 
a place I've never been. And I cry, oh Lord, I just don't understand. But every trial has taught me that He will never fail me. I know. Good evening. Welcome to South Asheboro Church of God. So good to see you in God's house tonight. Good to have those watching online. Um, thanks to everybody to come out on uh, Monday night for the prayer service. You know, prayer changes things. Prayer changes people. Praise God. Uh, good to have brother and sister ball back tonight. God touched them, helped them, touched them in their body. Sister Sarah, the, God touched her and helped her. Uh, sister Sandra, God's continuing to touch and bless and help. And good to have Cheryl and James with us tonight. Praise God. Uh, 
So let us uh, stand and let's go to the Lord in prayer as we open up the service. Precious Heavenly Father, we come to you today. We're just thankful, Lord God, for every blessing, Lord God, you bestowed upon us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to be back in your house tonight, Lord. Lord, we're thankful every time, Lord, we can come together, Lord God, to worship you and the beauty of holiness. You're a wonderful God, and you're worthy to be praised. Praise your holy name. Lord, I ask God you just reach down tonight in a mighty way, Lord God. Touch, Lord God, our pastor as he brings the word of God. Lord, I ask God you're anointed, Lord God, the song service, Lord God, is it prepares the atmosphere for the word to be preached, Lord God. Lord, I ask God you to touch, Lord God, brother and sister Paul. Lord God, sister Sarah, sister Sandra, continue to touch them in our bodies. James and Cheryl, touch Cheryl on her body, Lord. Heal her, Lord God. Touch your brother James and his body, heal him, Lord God. Lord, just pour out your spirit tonight in a mighty way, Lord God. I thank you and I praise you for every blessing, for everything you've done. I thank you, Lord God, for reaching down tonight, Lord God. Touch those who are sick and afflicted, Lord God, those who are watching online, Lord God, those who are sin sick, Lord God, convict them, Lord God, before it's eternally too late, Lord God, help them come to know you as a personal Savior, Lord God, give you praise, give you honor, give you glory, for all things are accomplished, Lord, in Jesus' name we do pray, and that's these things, praise your holy name, in Jesus' name we pray, amen, hallelujah, thank you, Lord Jesus, praise God, amen, praise God, hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise your holy name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God. Let's continue to worship of Sister Amy and I guess Sister Sharon will come lead us in the congregational. Okay. Uh, Sister Anna, she's sick tonight, so her class will stay out here when we turn the services over to the classes. Let's all stand if you're able to, please. While they're singing, go shake somebody's hand, tell them you're glad to see them in God's house tonight. Tell them you love the Lord and you love them. Yes. Tell them you're glad for the election. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes.
Some glad morning we shall see Jesus in the air. Coming after you and me, joy is ours to share. What rejoicing there will be when the saints shall rise. Headed for that jubilee yonder in the sky. Oh, why singing? Oh, why shouting? On that happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, why glory? Hallelujah. When we meet our blessed Savior in the skies. Seems that now I almost see all the same you did. Rising for that jubilee that is just ahead. In the twinkling of an eye, changed with them to be. All the living saints to fly to that jubilee. Oh, what singing. Oh, what shouting. On that happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what glory. Savior in the sky. When with all that heavenly host we begin to sing, singing in the Holy Ghost, how the heavens will ring. Millions there will join the song, with them we shall be. Praising Christ through ages long, heaven's jubilee. Oh, what singing, oh, what shouting. On that happy morning when we all shall rise, oh, what glory, hallelujah, when we meet our blessed Savior in First the skies. When with all that heavenly host we begin to sing, singing in the Holy Ghost, how the heavens will ring. Millions there will join the song, with them we shall be. Praising Christ through ages long, heaven's jubilee. Oh, what singing, oh, what shouting, on that happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what glory, hallelujah, when we meet our blessed Savior in the sky. Praise God. Oh, what singing. You take a, a professional singer, and they may seem beautiful, but you take a little saint of God that's got the Holy Ghost on, now you ain't never heard anything prettier than that. Praise God. Uh, at this time, Brother Eddie's going to come and lead some prayer requests. God. That tickled me when Sister Sarah told me to take him off that list because he got saved. He said, that's, that's, that's amazing. Praise God. That's right. It's amazing what his prayer, what prayers can do. Um, can you pray for Brother and Sister Ball uh, and Sister Sandra and Sister Betty, uh, Sister Angela, uh, Brother Sam, Brother Dean, uh, Sister Darlene, and Doc Milliken, Tom Otwell, Peggy Fogelman, Joanne Sanders, uh, Larry Pennington, uh, Sister Sarah, um, Sister Ball's nephew, Dakota, uh, Joyce Stillman, his uh, sister, uh, Sarah's um, sister-in-law. Uh, they put it, I think she said pacemaker they're putting in tomorrow. No, doing, it tonight. doing it tonight. Okay. Let's remember her. And also Brother Albright's having a procedure tomorrow. 
remember him. And uh, all these I mentioned, they need healing in their bodies. Uh, let's remember Sam Lamb, Lawson Ferguson, uh, Colton, and Mark Aiken. They need healing and salvation. Um, let's remember Sister Sarah's children, Nathan Luck and Franklin Luther, uh, mine and Donna's children. They all need salvation. And uh, let's remember the youth from our church, Haley, Harper, Aaron, Jalen, Selena, and Tierney. Does anybody else have a prayer request? Remember this request from Remember Sister Audrey. Anybody else? Right. Remember Sister Anna Grace and uh, Brother Branson. Anybody else? If not, let's stand and go to the Lord in prayer. Precious Heavenly Father, Lord, we just love you today, God, and thank you for everything you do. Lord, you are a mighty God, mighty to be served, God. Love you and praise you, Lord. honor you for everything you do, God. <clears throat> Lord, I just pray that you just have your way in this service tonight, God. Anoint your preaching tonight, God. Anoint the singers and the musicians, Lord. Lord, we just ask you, Lord, to uh, anoint our hearts to hear and, and, and our uh, hearts to receive and our ears to hear what you have to say tonight, God. Lord, we just thank you for everything you do, God. Touch brother and sister Paul tonight, God. Heal their bodies, Lord. Just, uh, touch her nephew, God. And uh, heal his body, Lord. Touch brother Sam tonight, God. He'll heal him tonight, Lord. Uh, touch sister Darlene tonight, God. Help her. Uh, Lord, I pray for sister Angela and sister Ben. Lord, you just touch their bodies, God. Heal them, Lord. Heal Donna tonight, God. For her blood this for Lord. Save my children, God. Thank you for this, what you've done in this election today, God. Lord, I know it was you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. We love you and praise you and thank you for everything you do, God. Oh, we just uh, ask you to touch uh, Sister Sandra today, God. Lord, you just heal her body, God. Give her complete healing of her body, Lord. Thank you for what you've done for her, Lord. Lord, ask you to touch my brother Benny, God. Heal his body. His wife, uh, Sandra, God. Heal her body completely, Lord. Touch the sister Sarah today, God, Lord. Lord, ask you to save her children, Lord. Uh, save Nathan Love, God. Lord, just, uh, Lord, first of all, touch the trousers tonight, God, Lord. She's sick, and uh, Lord, ask you to be with Brother Albright tomorrow, God, as he has that procedure done, Lord. Just touch him and heal him, Lord. Lord thank you for everything you do. We love you, praise you, and honor you, God. Have your way to service tonight, God. Let's continue to worship as, uh, in giving as I get our ushers coming to this time to receive the evening offering. Praise his name. Thank you, Jesus. Brother Matthew, would you pray over this time of worship?
the Lord. May God richly bless you for your faithfulness and giving. Announcements, uh, we've got our envelopes, Christmas gift for our pastor, so they're in the vestibule, get some uh, envelope, put something in there, give to our pastor, uh, you'll put it in there, Sister Blanche will be collecting these, and so we want to start this now. Uh, also, uh, our revival starts this Friday night at 7 o'clock with Brother Curtis Teague, on Saturday night it'll be at 6 o'clock. And then Sunday will be our regular services. So be praying for this revival. You know, he can't bring revival. He can bring the word of God, and God knows what we have need of. But God's the one who brings revival. Praise God. Uh, also, uh, Brother Zach will be preaching at uh, Terra Bella this Saturday at 10 o'clock, so be praying for him. If you can, go out and support him. Uh, on uh, November the 16th, the fall, next Saturday, not a week from this coming Saturday, will be our Seniors Fellowship. We've got a sign-up sheet out in the vestibule. If you'll be coming, you need to sign up that for the seniors. That's 50 and above. Uh, on December the 6th, from 6 to, uh, 6.30 in the evening, ladies' Christmas dinner at the Fellowship Hall. On December the 7th at 3 p.m. will be the men's uh, luncheon at Pioneer. The van will be leaving at 2.30. On December the 13th, the church uh, Christmas dinner will be at 6 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. On December the 14th, the youth Christmas party from 5 to 7 in the Fellowship Hall. And on December 22nd, will be the treat bags. So we've got a lot. There's a, it's on the bulletin board out there. You look at it. Take your camera. You, most everybody's got a smartphone now. Just take a picture of it. It helps you rem remember it. Uh, what I want to speak on that is pure religion. The Bible talks about pure religion in James 1 and 27. It says, pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fathers and the widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Keep himself unspotted from the world. Today we see too many people getting spotted by this old world. If we want to have pure religion and be undefiled, keep yourself unspotted from this world. Praise God. Let's continue to worship as brother and sister Albright come to minister in song. Yes, yes. Uh, the last Sunday of, uh, before uh, Thanksgiving, I think it's the 24th, we'll be having our uh, turkey giveaway for the pack of pew, the one who brings the most people to Sunday school that morning, uh, I guess morning, morning, Sunday school and preaching, will receive a turkey. The most who, pack of pew Sunday, we call it pack of pew Sunday. So get out, invite, bring people in, and get a free turkey.
that's all that matters, though the world may not seem. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. There's a roof up above me. Praise God. Do you wake up each morning thanking the Lord for the blessings of you know, all the things he's done. He's kept us through the night. He, you know, we've woke up in the right mind. We've got a roof over our head, food to eat. I mean, we're just a blessed people. Do we thank the Lord for it? Praise God. We need to thank him each and every day for all the bountiful blessings. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Give God a hand of praise tonight. Hallelujah. Now, I'm a firm believer that I don't have to wait for God to do anything else in my life before I bless Him. Everything He's already done, He's worthy to be blessed. Amen. I don't have to wait till tomorrow and see what He's going to do tomorrow before I bless Him. Matter of fact, if He don't do anything else for me, uh, I've got so much to thank Him for. Amen. God's been so good to every one of us, and uh, we woke up to some wonderful news this morning. Did you wake up to good news? Amen. Amen. I told somebody, I said, it just shows us, so, shows us that not only is there power when God's people pray, but it also shows us that God's not just given up on this nation. I thank God for that. Amen. I still want to see. I told Brother Albright before service we were talking. I said, I believe this is going to help our country economically, but I want to see God do something spiritually in this nation. I don't believe there's going to be a worldwide revival before the Lord comes. I don't I believe that's wishful thinking. But I believe where people are hungry, revival will break out. And I'd love to see revival break out in this country. Amen. And lives be changed by the power of God. And glad to see you tonight. Good to have Cheryl with us tonight. Appreciate you, Cheryl. Give her a hand of appreciation. And James, love you, James. Appreciate you, good folks. Good to have Brother and Sister Ball back with us. We've missed them. Glad they're feeling better. God's helping them. Good to see Sister Sarah back with us. God's touching her and helping her. And Brother Oliver, we missed him. I know they got a new uh, great-grandbaby now, is my understanding. And uh, they call them great-grandchildren for a reason. And I said, I want to know if they're better than just grandchildren. They got that name, great, so there must be something behind that. And uh, but we're glad all of you is here tonight. We love and appreciate you I uh, do pray for uh, <clears throat> Sister Anna Grace and Brother, um, what's his name? Brother Branson. Pray for them. They've been sick and pray for healing. God can heal them. Amen. We still have some more sick. Let's pray God will touch and help them. And uh, we just want to bless the Lord. Will you raise your hands and just bless him tonight? Just bless him in this house tonight. Hallelujah. Bless him tonight. Because of who he is, bless him. Because of what he's doing, bless him. Because of what he's going to do. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Amen. If you have your Bibles, Colossians chapter 4 tonight. If you're not a student of the Bible, that's in your New Testament. Man, if you don't know where that's at, that's the next one after the Old Testament. If you don't know where that's at, you need to come down to these altars and pray. <laughs> Amen. I love the Bible, don't you? I love the Word of God. If you will read it and study it, you will always find something in there that you need when you need it. Things that nobody else knows about, but you start studying this book. And I'm not talking about just reading a few verses, you know, each day just to say you've read it, but study it and spend time in it. And if you spend time in it, uh, it'll get in you. And when it gets in you, uh, it'll help you. Amen? 
I appreciate the word of the Lord. <clears throat> Colossians chapter 4 tonight. And we're going to read verse 2. The Bible says, Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Continue in prayer. Persevere in prayer. The Amplified says, Be persistent and devoted to prayer. Persistent and devoted to prayer. Being alert and focused in your prayer life. You have to stay focused. You have to stay disciplined. Because if you don't, you'll drift from prayer. It's a, it's, it's, it happens. If you don't be determined daily, I'm going to spend time with God in prayer. I'm going to be disciplined. I'm going to persevere in prayer. You'll drift in prayer. And when you drift in prayer, you'll drift away from him, the one we're supposed to be praying to. So we want to make sure that we do things the right way. Be persistent and devoted to prayer. Being alert and focused in your prayer life with an attitude of thanksgiving. Father, thank you tonight. I stand here humbly tonight, God, and I appreciate, Lord, more than this congregation knows or realizes. I appreciate this opportunity to stand behind this sacred desk. I don't ever, ever want to take this time for granted, Lord. And I appreciate you letting let me be in this house tonight. Appreciate you letting me play music tonight. Thank you for letting me hear the songs tonight. The opportunity to give, Lord, and to be among believers in this house this evening. Thank you for the privilege to preach the Word of God. I pray you'll help me for the next little while, God, <clears throat> that you'll set a guard upon my lips. Let me preach only heavenly things, only from this blessed book, Lord. I pray you will anoint the hear ears to hear right now, God. I pray you'll clear all of our minds, remove every distraction from our mind now, Lord. We will receive this word of God tonight. And Lord, we won't just go away saying we was glad to hear the word, but we'll be a doer of that word, Lord. Uh, not hearers only, but doers also of the Word of God. Touch us in these orders tonight. Now, I pray for this upcoming revival. If time stands, you can come tonight, Lord. If you tarry your coming, I pray for these meetings that are scheduled this weekend. Give us a great move of God, Lord. I pray don't let anybody miss any services, Lord. Let them see the necessity to be in your service, in your house. And tearing in these orders, God, we're praying for revival. We believe in you for revival, and we want to bless you and praise you for it all. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Everybody shouted amen tonight. Wow. I won't try to hold you a long time. I always want to make sure we don't preach on beyond the Spirit. I want to make sure we're sensitive to the Spirit of God. and also want to make sure we allow plenty of time in these altars so there's no rush when we get here. We can get along with him and, and talk with him. And I know that when we talk with him, he's going to talk with us. Amen. I want to preach tonight on this thought, continue in persistent and devoted prayer. Continue in persistent and devoted prayer. I believe tonight that you will agree with me that no generation has lived on this earth that has the Christian resources that we've been able to have at this point in our history. We have Christian books. There's Christian bookstores. You can go on Amazon and find just about any kind of Christian book that your heart desires. We have Christian devotionals. Now, I'm not against Christian devotionals, but I can tell you, if that's what you're trying to live your prayer life off of, you're not going to make it in this fight. We have Christian study guides, and the list could go on and on. I could sit here tonight and just name this and that, on and on. But I can assure you that all the books and the study guides and the devotionals are nothing more than spiritual junk food when compared to prayer. A.W. Tozer said a few minutes of earnest prayer will often give more light than hours of reading the commentaries. I also believe that you'll agree with me that in spite of all of these spiritual resources that are available to us today, there's never been a generation that is more spiritually weak and anemic and worldly and powerless 
than this generation that we're living in right here and right now. I told you, I, you know, I always try to stay in the church of God because I'm church of God. There was a time, my friend, that you could tell the church of God folks uh, from everybody else out there in that world. When a church of God folk walk, for church of God folks walked into a restaurant, you knew there was something different about those folks. Today we become so worldly that we've lost much of our identity when it comes to the Word of God and serving God. Can you say Amen? Amen. The purchase of all of these resources. Now I'm not preaching against resources. I'm thankful for them. I use commentaries. I don't have, you know, daily devotionals I use, but I have commentaries and I, I have resources that I'm, I'm thankful that we're able to have uh, and I believe we can benefit from those things. But when we substitute our prayer life uh, for Christian resources, uh, the church is going to pay a heavy price in other areas of life. We don't have to go any further today than to just casually glance at some of the trends in Christianity uh, to see that the landscape is not only changed, but it's changing daily. What used to be Christianity looks a whole lot different today. Come on now and say amen. The landscape is changing in the trends of Christianity, uh, and it's not changing in a positive way. It's changing in a negative way. Now, the cry, I can tell you the thermometer, when you put that thermometer out there among the churches, uh, the cry today seems to be that for revival. Uh, we hear that. We hear preachers say that. We hear evangelists and pastors say that. We hear saints of God and spiritual leaders in a lot of the churches today, they, they say that we need a revival. We need God to move. I've heard it said during this, leading up to this election, how we need a revival in this country. I believe everybody in this sanctuary would raise your hand and agree uh, that the need of this day is a heaven sent revival uh, in the United States of America. Amen. Most people will agree with that in the church. Uh, I mean, even some of the churches that are more secular, more worldly, uh, they, they say that we need a revival today. But the problem is, is that many times uh, we're looking for revival in the wrong places. Today, revival is being pursued through programs. Uh, let me say this to you. There's not a program in the church uh, that's going to bring a heaven-sent revival. Uh, revival is trained for with DVDs. Uh, we're setting preachers in classrooms and playing DVDs, uh, you know, Christian resources, uh, and expect from that DVD we're going to have a revival in the church. Uh, that will never happen. Uh, Revivals chased after in seminars. Uh, I can tell you there's not a seminar. Uh, I don't care how good the speaker is, how smart that man is or that woman. Uh, you're not going to find revival uh, in a seminar or a classroom. Uh, revival is studied in books. Uh, amen. But the only book that tells us what real revival comes from uh, is in the Word of God, this blessed book uh, right here. Now, I've got, I've got books on revival. I've got books on Leonard Ravenhill and B.H. Clinton, and I'm not discounting that. Uh, thank God for those books. Amen. Uh, but revival does not come from studying books written by men. Uh, revival searched after in so-called spiritual social media. But the question has to be raised today. Uh, has anybody come to the conclusion, uh, has anybody decided uh, to ask God in the deep places of prayer uh, for an outpouring of the Holy Ghost? Uh, I still believe that when the church prays, uh, something happens in heaven. Uh, I believe when the church gets serious about prayer, uh, I believe something changes in the atmosphere uh, in that church because God uh, hears those prayers and God responds uh, to the those prayers. Can you say amen? Has it crossed our minds that these spiritual resources uh, have taken our prayer away from us? This is the time when we must entirely devote ourselves again uh, to prayer. 
a day when we must devote ourselves to the struggle uh, of intercession. Listen, it's not easy. I'm not up here telling you it's easy uh, to lay hold of God. I'm not telling you it's easy to give your time in prayer. Amen. There's a lot of things we do during the day that's not difficult uh, that the devil does not fight us over. Uh, I'm telling you when it comes time to get along with God, uh, that enemy wants to harass and vex and distract uh, and fight the child of God. It's not easy to do that. It's not easy. There is a price to pay. There is a cost to revival. But the church has got to shake herself and say, no matter what the cost may be, I'm willing to pay that price. Listen to me, moms and dads. You got lost children. You better pay the price in prayer. You got families in a mess. You better pay the price in prayer. You're having problems with your mind. You're having problems with spiritual warfare. You better be willing to lay the gauntlet down and say, I'm going to fight on my knees because I know that when I pray and touch God and lay hold of God, everything's going to change. I said, everything is going to change. Can you shout amen? It's not easy, but it must be. Why, Brother Shelton? Because time is running out. The Lord's going to come. This world's in a mess. If you haven't looked lately, take a look. This world is in a mess. Churches are in a mess. Homes are in a mess. The schoolhouse is in a mess. I told you, I think it was on Sunday night, you know, the, the trends of these days are different uh, than the trends of our day when we were coming up in school. Uh, when we were in school, you know, there was a certain type of shoe that what became, you know, popular, and so people wanted that shoe. Uh, there were certain types of jeans that they wanted, and that became popular, uh, you know, and on and on. Uh, but today, it's not about the shoe so much uh, or about the jeans so much, uh, but now we're dealing with genders, uh, and, and it's popular to change your gender today. Uh, it's it's popular if you're a boy to be a girl. It's popular if you're a girl to be a boy. I'm just telling you, hey amen, these are different days. These are wicked times. The Lord is coming soon, and we must have a revival. I said we must have a revival. Sinners are bound up deep in sin, and backsliders are a long way from home. And I can tell you, friend, you can't love the devil out of nobody. we got to love the sinner, and we got to love the backslider, uh, gotta love the homosexual and the lesbian, uh, but you can't love the devil out of nobody uh, and you can't love sin out of anybody, uh, but you can pray uh, for God to touch them, uh, you can pray for God to convict them, uh, we can pray for a revival uh, and revival comes to the church uh, it don't make a change in that world today somebody give me my hand of praise tonight Hallelujah to God. The answer to the problems of our day does not lie in spiritual study guides. It does not lie in devotional prayer books. It does not lie in commentaries. It's, there's not a how-to book to have revival. There's not a spiritual seminar on how to have a revival. It's not in a prayer breakfast. Uh, amen. Again, not knocking any of these things, uh, but the Bible tells us how revival will come. In First Chronicles 7, 14 and 15, God said, If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will heal, forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now mine eyes shall be open and my ears are tent under the prayer that is made in this place. We're not ever going to have a revival until the church gets desperate to get on her knees again. We're not ever going to have revival in this country until we find our way back to an order and we tarry there. Somebody said, I'm too tired to pray. You got to shake that off. Somebody said, I'm too busy to pray. You got to shake that off. Somebody said, I've had a hard day, fought the devil all day. Well, you need to be in a prayer room somewhere laying hold of God and God will revive us. Somebody shout amen. No church.
that the orders lay bare should ever expect to have a heaven sent revival. No home that does not have an order in it uh, should ever expect to have God's presence in that home. No individual that does not have a prayer life uh, should ever expect to have God's power in their lives. Uh, the church has to come back to prayer. Uh, amen. I, I know we preach about it. You get excited. You clap your hands and you say amen. Uh, but are we really praying? Do we really pray? Uh, do we really pay the price in prayer? Uh, when's the last time you prayed uh, till you were sweaty? Come on now and talk to me here tonight. When's the last time that you prayed uh, that you forgot about what time it was? Uh, you forgot about what time your show came on. You forgot about what day of the week it was. You forgot about you had to get up early and go to work in the morning. You just got alone with God and you got lost in his presence. And you touched God and God touched you for your good. Prayer must be reinstituted in the home again. People of God must pray. The altar must be rebuilt and we must seek the face of God Almighty. This is what the early church did. I, I love to read the book of Acts, don't you? I love to read the exploits of that early church. But again and again and again, you find them in a place of prayer. We don't study too much about that. We want to read about the healings. We want to read about how they preached about Jesus. We want to read about the dead being raised. We want to see those things happen today. We want to see devils cast out. We want to see God fill the house of the Lord. Amen. Most people do. If you don't, you know, then you're not hungry enough for the things of God. But we overlook that part where the Bible said, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church. If we're going to see those things happen, it's not just just going to happen because we come and sing. It's not just going to happen because we come and play music. It's not going to happen just because we come and preach or we give in the offering plate. But if the church will get determined, I'm going to be devoted and committed to prayer. We're going to see God save some sinners. We're going to see God raise some dead people. Amen. Spiritually and physically. We're going to see some devils cast out. We're going to see heaven come down uh, and kiss the earth uh, and God will revive us again. Uh, this is what the early church did. The early church was a church marked by prayer. If the early church made such an emphasis on prayer but not just prayer but prayer and evangelism then we have to consider this question raised from Leonard Ravenhill. And the Raven, he'll say it, I read it in this book called Revival Praying. He said, is it really a comfort to know that the recent converts will become just like us? What if they are as lazy and self-excusing in the manner of personal devotion to Jesus and active engagement in soul winning as the rest of our listed church members? He said, is that a thrilling thought or is it a spine-chilling one? The question is this, what if the new converts are going to turn out like you? What if the new converts are going to turn out like me? Are they going to be a praying people? Are they going to be people with power? Are they going to be committed people? Are they going to be people on fire for the Lord? Are they going to be people hungry for God? I'm just telling you here tonight that the order's got to be opened up again. We can't have a closed sign in the altar the order in the home's got to be opened up again. You, you, run, you ride by the businesses and uh, you see the sign that says open. Uh, amen. You see cars around there. There's activity there. Uh, when you come by and it says closed, uh, ain't nothing going on there. Uh, well, that's what it's got to be in the prayer closet again. Uh, that's how it's got to be in the church order again. Uh, we got to have a sign that says open, uh, that there's activity going on there. Uh, people are dying and going to hell uh, every single day. Uh, people are losing their battle with depression, uh, anxiety, and fear. Uh, people feel hopeless, uh, and the church is just glad, uh, amen, that they got the perfect attendance record for the year. Uh, but it's got to be more than going to church. Uh, got to be more than knowing the songs. Uh, got to be more than clapping our hands and raising our hands. Uh, but the church uh, has got to be a people of prayer one more time. Only one more time. 
Time's going to run out. And the church must be praying again. We have to ask ourselves this question today. How much longer will I allow things to rob me of my prayer time? When are we going to restore our churches and our lives to be houses of prayer rather than dens of thieves? If we don't pray, the enemy will take over. You hear what I'm telling you tonight? If we don't pray in our home, the enemy will take over that home. If we don't pray and keep God in our hearts, that enemy will take over our mind and torment us till we don't know what's up and down or left from right anymore. We'll be so discouraged and despondent uh, we won't know how to live or what to do any longer. Uh, amen. The church has got to see the need again. Uh, I appreciate all the extra things that we do here. I appreciate the way you show up for the food. Uh, appreciate the way you're faithful to come to church. Uh, I'm telling you, friend, if I want you to be faithful in anything, uh, I want you to be faithful in prayer. Uh, I'd rather you find an order to pray uh, and be faithful to that order, uh, faithful to that place, that private place with God, uh, than to show up for every meal. Uh, it's Christmas time coming. Brother Charlie listed off uh, all the functions that we got going on. Uh, but don't let those things, uh, hey amen, I want you to come, uh, but don't let those things rob you. Uh, don't you say, well, I have to go to this today uh, and that tomorrow. Uh, I'm too tired to pray. No, sir. Uh, you make sure you pray. Pray, uh, before you do anything else, uh, make sure we're devoted and committed unto prayer. If we don't pray, the enemy is free to do his work in the church, in our minds, our home, our marriages, among our families, and even in this very nation. We have to realize the necessity of prayer again and then allow this knowledge to drive us to our knees. Without it, marriages are going to fail if you're having problems in your marriage, why don't you get an order and pray again and seek God? If we don't pray, churches are going to dry up and die. I'm telling you, friend, I've been in some where you can tell they're not praying in that church uh, because it's dry and dead and lifeless. Uh, I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm Pentecostal all the way through. Uh, hey, man, you cut me. Ain't no Baptist going to bleed out of me. Uh, ain't no Methodist going to bleed out of me. I'm not knocking them, uh, but I'm not Baptist and I'm not Methodist and I'm not Presbyterian. Uh, I'm Pentecostal through and through. Uh, and the Pentecostal church is a church uh, that is to be alive and on fire. Uh, and operating in the power of God. But the only way that will happen is when the church knows how to pray. And when we pray, the power will move in our midst. Can you say amen? This country is going to crumble if the church doesn't allow the, the need of the hour to drive her to her knees again. Countless souls are going to be forever lost in a burning hell. So the church has got to build the altar again. Our generation is apathetic about prayer. Matter of fact, the greatest question this generation seems to be this. Wonder why God doesn't answer my prayers. We hear that a lot. Why ain't God moving? Why isn't God answering me? Why isn't God responding to my prayers? Uh, that seems to be the dominant question. But the dominant question should be, uh, how can I improve my prayer life? How can I improve my prayerlessness? Come on, say amen. I believe that some of the difficult circumstances of life uh, could be changed if we just throw off the apathy uh, in our spirits uh, and to begin to commit ourselves and devote ourselves uh, to seeking God again in prayer, uh, to commit to prayer, uh, and then to continue in prayer each and every day. Did you realize that prayer is one of the least practiced disciplines uh, among the church? I've told you before, when I've counseled with people that have problems, I always ask them the first thing, how's your prayer life? And every single time, they always say the same thing. Well, I'm not praying like I should. Well, I know I could pray more. And I say, we don't have to go any further then. There's your problem right there. If you start praying, things are going to change. 
If you'll start seeking God, I, I tell you, the marriage will get better. If you'll start seeking God, there'll be power in your life. You struggle all the time and say, Lord, I, I just don't know if I'm going to come through this battle. I don't know if I'm going to make it another day. I'm thinking about quitting. I, I tell you how to get that out of you. Just get in that order and pray till you touch God and God touches you. He'll put some fight up in you and you get up renewed and revived and you declare come hell or high water. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to back up. I'm going to go forward in the power of God. I told the Lord this afternoon coming to church I said Lord there's some people in my life that would love to see me out of the ministry. That's exactly right. There's some folks that would love to see me not preach another message. And I told the Lord I said Lord I'm committed to this thing until I breathe my last breath. I said, Lord, I don't know why this come to me, just coming up the road, coming out of our neighborhood, on the way to church tonight. I said, Lord, no matter what, I, I'm committed to preaching. I, amen. Whether people like it or don't like it, I, whether they come or don't come, I, I'm going to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I, if you give me the grace, I, I'm going to preach it till I leave this world. I, I can tell you, friend, I, preachers are quitting daily. I, 1,500 ministers per month I, turn in their lights and say, I won't never preach again. Uh, how can that be possible? Uh, there's pressure in this time. Uh, these are different days. Uh, amen. It's different than when I started preaching uh, years ago. But I can tell you, friend, uh, any preacher, any saint of God uh, that'll have a prayer life, uh, amen, there ain't enough devils in hell uh, that can stop you from being committed uh, to what God's called you to do. Somebody come on and say amen tonight. Uh, if we'll pray, uh, we're going to make it through. Somebody Give him a hand of praise tonight. Uh, hallelujah to God. So if you're thinking about quitting, your prayer life is, is lacking. Somebody said, Brother Shelton, you don't think about quitting? Absolutely not. Since I got born again, there's never been a time that I thought about going back on God. Come on, brother. You say, Brother Shelton, come on. I do it all the time. Then you need to get your prayer life tightened up. You need to pray and pray uh, until you are strengthened daily uh, that you can say no matter what comes my way today, if I lose my life, uh, if I lose everything that I have, uh, I can tell you, friend, uh, I'm not going to quit serving the Lord uh, by the grace of God. That's the attitude has to be of the church. Uh, and if you have a prayer life, uh, that's going to be the attitude of the church. There must be a resurrection. That gnawing divine discontentment that used to push us to places of prayer. If we're apathetic in our praying, there's some terrible consequences going to accompany that. If we become apathetic in our praying, that enemy is going to get the upper hand of us. Our own suffering is going to escalate from the attacks of the enemy. It causes the power of God to come under a humanistic and carnal scrutiny. Uh, amen. That world can put their finger on us then. Uh, there must be some passion to return to our prayer life just one more time. And when the church begins to pray in persistent and devoted prayer with a passion for prayer, with a passion for revival, with a passion for God, the spiritual experiences are going to leave their marks on our surroundings again, uh, and we're going to see revival happen again. Can you say amen? For revival to come. This is where many people get tripped up. It's not just the fact that they're careless in their prayer life, but it also comes from the fact that there must be a pure heart when we pray. For revival to come, we must be pure in our heart. I can pray all I want, but if I'm not pure in my heart, nothing's going to happen. God's not going to do anything. Revival will not come. I've got to be pure in my heart. E.M. Bound said this, Our religion breaks down oftenest and most sadly in our conduct. Beautiful theories are marred by ugly lives. The most difficult as well as the most impressive point in piety is to live it. Our praying suffers as much as our religion from bad living. Preachers were charged in primitive times to preach by their lives or not preach at all. 
So Christians everywhere ought to pray by their lives or not pray at all. Praying which does not result in pure conduct uh, is a delusion. We miss the whole office and virtue of praying uh, if it does not rectify conduct. It is in the very nature of things that we must quit praying or quit bad conduct. A life growing in its purity and devotion uh, will be a more prayerful life. Prayer is the great need of this hour. Anybody believe? the great need of this hour and the church uh, if we're going to have revival. But if we're going to have revival and our prayer is going to be effective, uh, it must be marked by holiness of mind. It must be marked by holiness of heart. It must be marked by holiness of lifestyle. Prayer from a pure heart uh, will produce revival power. I said when we pray from a pure heart, uh, when I've lived right, uh, when I've served God, uh, and I begin to pray and lay hold of God, it will produce a power in my life. It will produce a power in the church. It will produce revival among the people of God. What I'm telling you is this. If you live like the devil all week and then try to go into the church and lay an order on a Sunday morning, there ain't nothing going to happen and God's not going to move. But if you live right and you serve God right and you live pure and holy and righteous uh, by the grace and the power of God. Uh, I tell you, when we pray, uh, it'll shake heaven. Uh, and when it shakes heaven, uh, it's going to shake something here. Uh, and God's going to show up in a mighty way. Put your hands and love him and praise him tonight. Prayer is the great need of this hour. Our prayer must be marked by holy living and holy lives. Psalms 24, 3 through 6 says, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob, uh, Selah. That means pause and meditate on what he just said here. If we're going to come before his face, uh, if we're going to have a revival, if we're going to see God move, uh, amen, our hands have got to be clean uh, and our hearts have got to be pure. Uh, we start revival, schedule meetings on Friday night. Uh, I want to tell you, tonight's a good time. Uh, if you got sin in your heart, uh, if you got unforgiveness, Forgiveness in your heart, if you got bitterness in there, uh, if you got lust or pride or any other sin uh, in that heart, tonight's a good night uh, to get in this order, uh, get it all under the blood, uh, so that when Friday night rolls around at the Lord tarries, uh, we're going to be positioned, uh, we're going to be ready, we're going to be prayed up, uh, we're going to be ready for God to do something mighty, and God will do something mighty in his church. Hallelujah to God. If our hearts are not pure, then we must repent. And if we repent, we'll turn from that wrongdoing. You can't repent tonight and go back and do wrong again tomorrow. Don't you know how, how what that must do to God? To say in the order, Lord, forgive me. I want to get this right. And then before the sun rises good the next day, you're already doing that again. You lay this down tonight and say, God, I ain't going to touch it anymore. But tomorrow you already picked it back up again. We won't never see a revival in the church that way. I said, we just might as well, you know, we come, sing our songs, clap our hands, preach our messages and go home. But nothing will ever happen among the church that will make any kind of difference out there in that world where the lost souls are bound for hell. Can you say amen? I want to say this in closing with love in my heart. There's some of you in this church, and I love you enough to tell you this, that you're bound up by things that you know, you know that you're not supposed to be bound up by. Things that you won't leave alone, but you know you're supposed to leave alone, but you keep going back and doing it. And there's some of you in this church tonight under the sound of my voice. I'm your shepherd. I can preach this. And amen. That you got things in your heart, bitterness in that heart, unforgiveness in that heart. 
that you know was not supposed to be there and you, you say well I, it's not there but when you hear their name when you see them you feel that burning bubbling up inside of you again uh, I'm, I'm just telling you if we're going to have a real revival I don't want to play games out here do you I said I don't want to play games out here I don't want to schedule revival for evangelists to come in here and our hearts are not ready and prepared for a move of God. So I'm saying to this church tonight, uh, amen, in these orders tonight, if there's things in that life that's not supposed to be there, if there's things in there that you know's not right before God, uh, I want us to get it under the blood tonight. I said I want to get it under the blood tonight. Uh, and I want to walk away from it. I want to leave it in the past. Uh, and I want to be determined. I, I don't want to just come and have a few services and go away feeling good and saying that was wonderful uh, and still be bound up on Monday next week. Uh, but I want to see God do something miraculous uh, in this church. Uh, if you don't want revival, you got the wrong pastor here. Uh, I want a revival. I want to see heaven uh, pour out his spirit upon us. Uh, I want your lost families to come in here uh, and be saved. I want my lost families uh, to come in here and be saved. Uh, I want you in this church that's dealing with infirmities uh, and sickness I, I want there to be enough power in here that you can be healed and set free and live different than the way that you came before you would experience my power you must experience my forgiveness, saith the Lord. You must humble yourself before me. You must repent of your sins and turn from those wicked ways. You must seek me with your whole heart. And if you will repent, I will forgive you, saith the Lord. And in my forgiveness, I, I will move in your midst. I will fill you with my power. When you approach me with a hunger and a desire and a broken heart and a repentant heart, then will you know my power and that I am your God, saith the Lord. Lift up your hands, church, and glorify him tonight. And Allah Ah, blessed Lord. Everybody stand and raise your hands tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. If you're here tonight, these altars are open. If you need to repent, if your heart's not pure, I want to invite you to come to these altars and pray and get everything under the blood tonight. If you care about your lost family, if you care about this nation, if you care about your marriage, if you care about the church, if you've got sin in your heart, you need to come and repent of it tonight. If you care about your soul, you need to come and repent of it in this order tonight. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. Somebody wake up in this house tonight. You need to be in these orders. You need to repent of some things. You need to make some things right. Come on, come on, come on, come on.
you know you hadn't prayed like you're supposed to. You ought to be in these altars repenting of that. You know you've said things about others you should have never said. You need to be in the altars repenting of that. You looked at things you know you ought not to be looking at. You need to be in these altars repenting. You know you told that lie that you shouldn't have told, but you know you told it. You need to be in these altars repenting of that tonight. You know you're handling things you ought not to be handling, touching things you ought not to be touching, uh, seeing things you ought not to be seeing, uh, hearing things that you ought not to be hearing, uh, saying things that you ought not to be saying. You need to be in these altars repenting tonight. They're coming tonight. There's more need to be done here. Search yourself. Don't worry about anybody else. Don't think about anybody else. Search yourself tonight. 